Mr. Roscoe Allen, all of this started when Mr. Roscoe Allen did not receive his $40,000 that well, he was a, a private contractor developing property in the city of Douglas. Mr. Allen came before the city council to request his reimbursement of his $40,000 for developing water sewer development in a certain community here in Douglas. The city council failed to pay Mr. Allen his $40,000 for his subdivision development for the water sewer. But yet, the white contractors got their monies. Mr. Are you sure? I'm positive. I was on the council and still on the council. Mr. Allen came before us several times to request that he get reimbursed of his monies. Mr. Allen was never reimbursed. As a result of never being reimbursed, he came to our meeting several times requesting it. The mayor became upset and irate that he kept coming. He found a way to stop him from coming, asking for his money, and he decided to take out a restraining order on Mr. Allen so that he could no longer come before our city council to request his money. And that's the gist of what, how all of this got started. Mr. Allen was only exercising his rights, but Mr. Pope, the mayor, did not want him to do so. He felt that it was embarrassing him as the mayor. He did not like it, and he filed he filed for a restraining order based on no facts, based on no witnesses, because I was in the courthouse when they had the hearing about it. He had no witnesses present to say that Mr. Allen had been stalking him and harassing him, and the judge granted it anyway. I filed for a restraining order against Robert Preston, who threatened me at a city council meeting. However, my restraining order was not granted, and it was on camera of Mr. Preston threatening me. So you go figure. Is it apples to apples in Coffee County? Apples to oranges or apples, oranges, and bananas? Citizens of Douglas and Coffee County, get up off your butts and investigate and look into what's happening here and take a stand and vote these corrupt people out of office. <laughs>
because the restraining order expired in January 2021, keeping Ellen beyond the expiration date of the order constituted false imprisonment and the other aforementioned charges. The grand jury found their allegations to be false and, since it is a violation of Georgia law to knowingly file, enter, or record any document in a public record or court knowing, or having reason to know, that the document contains false, fictitious, or fraudulent statements or representations, the grand jury in turn issued a special presentment against Worthy and Nally. A superior court judge issued a bench warrant against Worthy and Nally, and the two turned themselves in Friday. The special presentment is a charging instrument and is not evidence of guilt. All persons charged with crimes are innocent unless and until proven guilty in a court of law. Uh-huh. Yo, if I had a hundred sheep and one of them got away, I would leave the 99 and go find that one. That's right. Look from the locks and jaws of Satan, I come create, penetrate with force from the land of the lost and come like Muhammad got the devil on the run. run. Right. Uh huh. Yo, if I had a hundred sheep and one of them got away, I would leave the 99 and go find that one. That's right. Look from the locks and jaws of Satan, I come create, penetrate with force from the land of the lost and come, like Muhammad got the devil on the run, run. rise like the sun. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Falk, uh, do you have any opening statement? Yes, sir. Before you, you have an opportunity to testify, do you have an opening statement prior to testimony? Uh, you're not required to give an opening statement, but you're entitled to. Well, I think that I think that four of them are available, so all right, okay. All right, Mr. Allen, you also have a right to give an opening statement. You're going to have a right to testify if you wish to in just a moment. But uh, right now will be an opportunity if you wanted to give an opening statement for you to do so. I uh, don't have an opening statement at all. Okay, thanks, sir. All right, Mr. Paul, if you will come up and take the stand.
You know that you have a lawyer right now. You have an opportunity to discuss this with your lawyer before you testify. Do you still wish to uh, testify here today? I just want to clarify uh, uh, the authorization. That's all I want to do. No problem. Just raise your right hand, sir. <coughs> I'm um, swearing from testimony about to give me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, LBI. Yes, ma'am, I did. State your name. My name is Ross Square and Moon. All right, Mr. Allen, you may proceed. Okay, first of all, uh, the last statement he made about I came down here to my nephew who was in his face out. Uh, when I came down, uh, was, I showed him a copy of the receipts and stuff that I had done on the trailer park where I was uh, told that uh, I was reimbursing my $42,000 for running away to the sewer line. And with that, what he was talking about, he said that he had no problem reversing my money. And I went to court on that. And he denied me on that. It was a free free. He had a chance to break the top rate to reverse my money because they had a policy where if you want to trust me in the city, they had sent for running away to the sewer line for the city. So I found out about it, see. So that's what he talked about. It wasn't about no rebound of the office. It was about there, about three.
he had been killed in jail because of a warrant which was taken for aggravated stalking on July 21st, 2020 by a law enforcement officer. As you know, you had a motion, a hearing on your motion for bond back uh, in uh, August of last year before a different Superior Court judge, and that was denied. And you're aware you were indicted by a grand jury of this town. Um, and that uh, indictment was open on December 9, 2024, aggravated stalking. You had a subsequent bond hearing in front of me on December 17, 2020. So you're being held on the charge of aggravated stalking. Uh, not on any type of a civil case. Now, having uh, said that, uh, you're you're still in jail, and uh, you know we're at a time right now where the Supreme Court of Georgia has stayed any uh, type of a, a jury trial. And I'm concerned, obviously, that you're in jail, and right now can't get a jury trial. My understanding is that the um, Supreme Court of Georgia will be uh, soon um, uh, lifting the, the stay on jury trials and we'll be able to start processing these uh, cases. And uh, obviously your case will be one of the cases at the very top of the docket because uh, you, know, you either have to have uh, a, a trial or, 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 or a bond, one or the other. So understand that as it relates to your criminal case, and that's not what we're here for today, but while I had you here, I did want to explain to you that we are going to work quickly to try to afford you your right to a trial by jury as soon as possible. Okay, with those comments, that's the order of the court. All right, uh, if you want to stay in the courtroom, the clerk will make a copy and get it to you. Okay?
New Revised Section 28, Parliamentary Procedure, Section 2-29, say that the mayor shall decide, you got that? Not make decisions for what I'm the best of him. Y'all got nothing y'all for an audience just said that. A person got three minutes in a work session. That's a fight now. This is about y'all on fire, Mr. Paul. So you were wrong last week that I only got three minutes in a work session. Know your law, know your rules out here. You the mayor. All right, let me finish reading it. Now you got that. Now it says this right here. That the mayor shall decide at all permission me. That's what it says, decide. Okay, it said preserve order in the corner. It said nothing about no three men in no work session. Y'all got that? This is about y'all five. I would question this. Ain't no order that said nothing about no three men in no work session. You got that? So you're wrong. Now all y'all up here submissions, you know what's going on up here. Mm-hmm. You got that? It's wrong. So you said you were wrong last week so I had three men. Know your rules. Know your regulations. You got that? That's all I got to say now. And, Mr. Ann, you share that with Ms. Henderson so she can have a copy. I said, I want to share it with you. I'm about to make it. You get copy for it. Right. Right. You get copy for it. I'm talking about 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 no, I tell you that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Roscoe Allen, all of this started when Mr. Roscoe Allen did not receive his $40,000 that well, he was a, a private contractor developing property in the city of Douglas. Mr. Allen came before the city council to request his reimbursement of his $40,000 for developing water sewer development in a certain community here in Douglas. The city council failed to pay Mr. Allen his $40,000 for his subdivision development for the water sewer. But yet, the white contractors got their monies. Mr. Are you sure? I'm positive. I was on the council and still on the council. Mr. Allen came before us several times to request that he get reimbursed of his monies. Mr. Allen was never reimbursed. As a result of never being reimbursed, he came to our meeting several times requesting it. The mayor became upset and irate that he kept coming. He found a way to stop him from coming, asking for his money, and he decided to take out a restraining order on Mr. Allen so that he could no longer come before our city council to request his money. And that's the gist of how all of this got started. Mr. Allen... 